Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel structures in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be preparing our model for steel design by assigning the appropriate steel design parameters. We will now switch our attention over to our sample model in RAM Elements. Over the next series of videos, we are going to be focusing on analyzing, designing, and optimizing this steel structure. Now, the majority of the information for this steel system has already been added to the RAM elements model. Things that are important to make sure your model has before an analysis is performed is to ensure that all of your supports have been modeled. You want to make sure that every member in your model has a section property and a material property assigned to it. And you want to make sure that all of your relevant load combinations have been generated. For this particular model, we are preparing to do a steel design, so we have assigned steel section properties and materials to all the members. We have also generated steel design load combinations in accordance with the AISC 360 LRFD specification. Now before we go ahead and analyze, design, and optimize this structure, we do want to take a look at the steel design parameters and see if we need to assign some supplementary information to this particular model. Let's go ahead and get started with that process. In the data panel, I'm now going to select the Members tab, followed by the Steel Design icon. As you can see, our steel design parameters are separated into different categories, including AISC and AISI categories. Let's go ahead and start with the AISC parameters, which should be assigned to any members that you're designing according to the AISC code. Now in RAM elements, you are able to model physical members or members that are modeled as they will be physically constructed. For example, let's take a look at one of these steel columns. Now this steel column was modeled from the base of the structure all the way up to the roof, which represents a full physical member as it will be constructed. It was not necessary in RAM elements to break this member up at the intermediate nodes where other members are intersecting it or bracing it. Now all members though will be considered unbraced for the entire length of the member from the starting node to ending node unless specified otherwise through the steel design parameters. So for these particular members, these steel columns, we can assume that they are being braced by these wind girts at the spacing of these wind girts, which for this model happens to be five feet. So let's go ahead and take a look at what parameters we can specify to ensure that the proper bracing of these members is considered in the analysis and design. So that being said, I wanna select my steel columns first. I'm gonna highlight one of my steel columns, then I'm gonna come up to the spreadsheet tab in my ribbon and click on the select by description icon. So I've gone ahead and selected the members I want to take a look at. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to view the local access system because as you specify your bracing of your members, it's going to be important to understand what the local access system that's assigned to the members is currently set at. So to do that, we're going to go to the view tab in our ribbon toolbar Let's just go ahead and turn on our local axis system. And we can see our local one axis, which typically points along the member. We could also see our local two axis, which typically represents your weak axis. And we can see our local three axis, which represents the strong axis of the member. Now, as I take a look in the data panel, we're going to scroll over until we find our bending conditions and we're going to find our we're going to scroll over until we find our compression information and we are going to find our L33 and L22 fields. Your L33 field indicates the unbraced length measured between the bracing members in the 3-3 or the strong axis direction. L33 is used for flexural buckling about the 3-3 axis. And if this parameter is set to zero, the program will assume the length between the nodes as the unbraced length. 
Now the same information holds true for the L22 parameter, except this is identifying the bracing along the weak axis of the member. And again, a value of zero um, means that the program will consider it unbraced between the end nodes. So what do we need to do if we actually do have bracing for these members? We are going to use our lateral or rotational bracing points command in order to specify that type of information. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go up to the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon and you're going to notice your active spreadsheet tools are going to become available for your steel design parameters. And what we're going to do is we are going to click on the assign lateral and or rotational bracing points icon. Now to define our lateral or rotational bracing points, we are allowed to enter this as a customized spacing or fixed spacing. You're going to use one of these two options depending upon what your bracing situation is for your particular members. Our wind girts are evenly spaced at every five feet along the length of the column. So I'm going to go with a fixed spacing. I'm going to enter there being braced along the weak axis of the member every five feet. So I just need to specify L22 as five feet. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And then we can see that this information was added here. Now in lieu of that, you could enter your bracing information directly into your data panel. And basically what this does is it braces it every five feet. If there's a little bit extra at the end, then that's why it'll be indicated this way. Now let's go ahead and move on and talk about uh, flange bracing for your members because there may be times where the compression flange is braced either continuously or along certain points. So say for example, I have some roof members that have a steel deck assigned to them. You're able to specify, you know, the compression flange is being continuously braced. So let's take a look at a couple of those parameters. And what we're going to do is we are going to start with our main roof beams. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of our main roof beams and then we'll select the rest by going to our by description icon. Now I have these selected and I have my local axis turned on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm also just for illustration purposes going to turn on some of these roof beams that we have. And basically for this model, I'm assuming these roof beams are supporting some type of roof deck and it's transferring their forces over to these main beams. Well, let's take a look at what the 3D rendering of that particular area is. And what I can see is I can see that my roof beams very clearly here are basically bracing this top flange of this member, but it's not providing a full top to bottom bracing of the member. So I wanna be able to specify that type of information. Now that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn off those roof beams because I'm going to be focusing on on these main beams right here. So what I can do is if I take a look back at my data panel, I'm going to take a look at the compression information here. So I have a CLT restraint. This indicates whether or not the member has a continuous torsional and flexural torsional buckling restraint on the member. So if your member was continuously braced throughout the entire top flange or compression flange, you can go ahead and select this checkbox. If it's not quite continuously braced, then we also have an LB positive and an LB negative item. The LB positive indicates the unbraced length of the compression flange in the positive side of the local two axis. Again, let's go ahead and turn on our local axis for this exercise. So we can see the positive two is pointing up for these members. Now this field will be used for the lateral torsional flexural buckling capacity calculation of the member and for the calculation of the nominal moment strength. You can also specify your LB negative field, which will indicate the unbraced length of the compression flange on the negative side of the local two axis. So I have my members selected that I want to specify. Again, a value of LB positive, negative, LB positive of zero and LB negative of zero would basically mean that it's unbraced for the full length of the member. So to specify an equally spaced bracing, I'm going to go to my spreadsheet tab in my ribbon and I'm going to click on the 
assign flange bracing points to the selected members icon. Now for these particular members, we happen to have the roof members are spaced every seven feet. So I'm going to go to, again, a fixed spacing. We're going to say in the positive direction of the local two axis, and it's at every seven feet. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. So we've specified that information. It's automatically populated in the LV, LB positive field. The next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at these roof members. So I'm going to go ahead and select one, and then I'm going to select the rest. Now for this model, we will assume that the roof beams are supporting some type of roof deck. Now the roof deck has not been modeled directly in RAM elements, but it will exist when the structure is built. The roof deck will provide continuous bracing support for the top flange of the roof members. And for this particular scenario, we're going to use the CLT restraint checkbox to consider this in the analysis and design. Now I have all of my members selected. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select with a double click the first selected member, the CLT restraint checkbox. Then I'm going to come up in the spreadsheet tab of my ribbon and I'm going to click on this icon. And what this is going to do is it's going to fill the current column with a value at the cursor location. So my cursor is here. If I click this double down arrow, it's going to basically copy that field to all of the currently selected members. The last thing I'm going to do, let me go ahead and unselect everything else, is I'm going to also assign some properties to my wind girts. So I'm going to select one wind girt and I'm going to select by description. Now the wind girts happen to be cold formed steel for this particular model. So in my steel design parameters, I'm now going to switch over to the AISI fields. You're going to see a lot of the very same types of fields in this area as we saw for AISC. And the same holds true that if this checkbox is unselected, it means it's not braced. If any of the fields are set to zero, it basically means that they're unbraced. Now for this model, we're going to assume that the wind girts are supporting some type of wall system or cladding. Again, the wall system is not directly modeled in RAM elements, but it does exist. Now this cladding is going to provide continuous bracing for the positive two axis of our member. So it's going to basically be the outside flange. And I can see very clearly here where the direction of the positive local two axis is pointing. And for this one, we're going to again use the CLT restraint to specify that condition. So we're going to scroll over until we find the CLT restraint. I'm going to double click and then use my fill current column down. Now there are a few other parameters within this particular steel design parameters area. And it is a good idea to go ahead and get familiar with the rest of them to see if there's anything else that might be applicable to your particular model before performing an analysis. Again, once we perform an analysis, if we change any type of design parameters that will require you to perform an additional analysis to make sure all the information is included. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.